Welcome to Beulahville Presbyterian Church this morning. I want to thank you for gathering with us here as you worship with us online, as we are gathered here to share God's word, to join together in our worship of the Lord. A few announcements to make you aware of this morning are, one, we will have our scheduled, stated session meeting tomorrow evening at 6.30 through Zoom. Also, we are still uh, hoping to hear from you about who our graduates are this year, whether from preschool or eighth grade or high school or college or even beyond that. As some folks are, have graduate work that they're finishing and in different ways, we want to hear about that as well. And our last uh, announcement is if you are interested in registering for uh, PEEP, they are taking registrations by mail. Uh, you'll find the information on the, uh, the previous post with the bulletin and the announcement pages there. Uh, please make sure that you get those and look at those as well. Let us worship the Lord together. you for the opportunity to gather together, to worship you. We pray, Lord, that you would be amongst us through your Holy Spirit. We would feel your presence and your peace, that our worship, Lord, today would be in spirit and in truth. We would be encouraged and strengthened through it, and that you would be ministered to by our worship. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our call to worship this morning is a responsive reading. Blessed be the God of our Savior, Jesus Christ. God has given us a new birth in the living hope of the resurrection. God has given us an inheritance that is imperishable and unfading. In this we rejoice even when we suffer trials. For although we have not seen Jesus, we love him. And although we have not seen him, we believe in him. For the outcome of our faith is the salvation of our souls. Let us stand and join our voices together in singing hymn 151, Crown Him with Many Crowns. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and four.
God has made known to us in deeds, power, signs, and wonders, and will not abandon us if we confess the truth about our lives. Let us together confess our sins before God and one another. God, you have made known to us the ways of life. Yet too often we put our things above you and turn away from the ways of life and toward the ways of death. Forgive us and guide us back into your presence that we may know the fullness of joy. Amen. God is our refuge and will not abandon us. In Jesus Christ, we are reconciled to God. That is a promise of peace and joy. Share that peace with one another and others. Amen. Send your Holy Spirit upon the reading and proclaiming of your word, that it may serve to show us the path of life and lead us into your presence where there is fullness of joy, peace, refuge, and strength. May your word speak, grow our knowledge and wisdom, speak into our hearts and our minds, and they strengthen us. Our first scripture lesson today comes, and it's actually our only scripture lesson today, it comes from uh, John chapter 20. We'll read verses 19 through 31. Hear these words from the Gospel of John. When therefore it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and when the doors were shut where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. And when he had said this, he showed them both his hands and his side. The disciples therefore rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus therefore said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, their sins have been forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they have been retained. But Thomas, one of the twelve called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples, therefore, were saying to Thomas, We've seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I shall see in his hands the imprint of the nails, and put my finger into the place of the nails, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days, again, Jesus' disciples were inside, and Thomas with them. Jesus came, the doors having been shut, and stood in their midst, and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Reach here your finger and see my hands. 
and reach here your hand and put it into my side, and be not unbelieving, but believing. Thomas answered and said to Jesus, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Because you have seen me, have you believed? Blessed are they who did not see and yet believed. Many other signs, therefore, Jesus also performed in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these have been written, that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now this time I want to invite the children to... Come and join me closer. I want to talk for a few minutes about this story, about Thomas, about the fact that we actually call him Doubting Thomas. Not a name that scripture necessarily gives him, but we do understand that he had doubts and uncertainty. He even said a phrase that I've been known to say uh, at different times, that I'll believe it when I see it. You know, there's a book out there, and you may, uh, you may know about it, you may not. I think they even have an aquarium in Myrtle Beach. But there's a book that's a, around called Ripley's Believe It or Not. It's a book that has all these things that are strange, maybe even uncommon, maybe things that we would not have believed unless there was a picture or a book that told us about. One in particular that I think about is a man named James Cook. He, he used to raise or raised chickens, and one of the interesting things that he had is the chickens could lay square eggs. Now to me that's totally unrealistic, but yet as I looked at it, looked it up, there have been other cases where these chickens have, other chickens have laid completely and perfectly square eggs. Not something that I would have believed unless there was other sources that would say that it's true. There's a lady named Joan Barnes. She's uh, in the book because she could hula hoop well. Maybe you as kids know of a hula hoop, maybe you have one, maybe you can do it well, or you're like me, you can't keep the hula hoop up around your waist, you can maybe keep it on your arm, but not your waist. She had the ability to uh, keep quite a few hula hoops in the air. And so, um, I wonder if you have a guess about how many. Go ahead, you can shout it out if you do. Maybe someone in the choir wants to make a guess. How many hula hoops she could keep up? Seven. Seven? Well, that's a good guess, but it's quite far from, from how many she could keep up. Anybody else have a guess? Fifteen. Fifteen. You're about maybe a little less than a sixth away, Miss Christy. She actually, it's said that she could hula hoop, and the numbers are kind of disputed in two different places. But Ripley's Believe It or Not book says that she could hula hoop 68 hula hoops at one time. She could keep them off the ground with her body at one time. Now, I don't know that, I don't know about you, but I haven't seen it, so it makes it a little hard to believe that. I mean, I don't know that there's enough square footage on a person's body to keep 68 of them up. But another source actually said she wasn't the most. There are others who have kept 70 and 80 hula hoops in the air. Now, we haven't seen it, and so it makes it hard to believe. You know, that's what happened with Thomas. I don't know where he was the day that Jesus was resurrected, but he wasn't in the room anymore. You know, Mary came back from the, the tomb and said, Hey guys, Jesus wants you to gather here. He's going to come and see you. So I would tend to believe that Thomas was probably there at one point, but got tired of, of being there and left. Maybe he wasn't there at all. I don't know. But 
But he wasn't in the room when Jesus appeared. And he says, I'm not going to believe it unless I can put my finger into the holes in Jesus' hand. Put my hand into his side. Eight days later, even with Thomas's doubt, Jesus pursued him and said, Hey, Thomas, it's me. We don't know if Thomas touched the holes in Jesus' hands or his pierced side. But Thomas's response is, my Lord and my God. And then Thomas becomes, even though we don't see any writings of him in the New Testament, Thomas becomes a great missionary. Carries the word of God all the way to India, it's believed, where churches pay homage to him even today with his name in their church name. He became passionate about this. And so I would, I would wonder, I wonder what it felt like to be cooped up. Maybe we experience some of those feelings right now. Maybe it, it, it also causes me to wonder what could have helped them feel that peace of Christ. Maybe what helps you feel more peace of Jesus Christ that he said is to be with the disciples like that. There's something else that I wonder. I wonder it about it for my children, but I also wonder it about for you. Knowing that Jesus truly was resurrected, I wonder. I wonder where you will go in your life. I wonder who you will bring the presence of Jesus to along your journey of faith. Because that's what God calls us to do. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the many blessings you've given us. And we thank you for the strength that you bestow upon us. Bless these young people, Lord. Strengthen them in knowing that you've called them. That you've said, peace be with you. That you've showed them the holes in your hands and through your side. Want them to believe that you are real and resurrected. You want them to share you with us. Bless them, Lord, as they understand what that means more and more each day. Bless them to experience your peace. And in this time, staying at home. Bless us all, Lord. In Jesus' name.
You may have been thinking while I was reading this morning that the setting of the scriptures seems a quite a bit like your house for the past couple of weeks. Or it at least maybe resembles that setting. I mean, think about it. Jesus has met Mary. It's, it's well after the morning and into the evening. She's run back to the disciples and gathered them. Peter and John have already seen the empty tomb. And they are gathered together where Jesus had said he would meet them. Doors locked and shut for whatever reason. No one has seen Jesus physically but Mary at this point. Not, Jesus, not James, not John, not Peter. They saw the empty tomb and haven't seen the resurrected Lord. They're all there. The doors are shut and locked. They're fearful of the outside world and fearful of anyone who comes and even knocks on the door. And all of a sudden, Jesus is in their midst, in their presence. There's a moment, I'm sure, that they weren't sure that it was Jesus or even sure how this person came through the locked door. I'm sure their emotions were causing them maybe to panic a little bit. Jesus says to them, peace be with you, and shows them his hands. He wants them to understand it is him. And that they need not fear, and he even says that a second time. Peace be with you. Throughout all of this, one of them is missing. We don't know if Thomas was there earlier. We don't know if he decided to leave to get fresh air or if he just was tired of being cooped up. Maybe he was, as he's been named throughout history, a doubter. We didn't fully believe that Jesus had risen from the dead and been resurrected. Only Mary had seen him, and so maybe he had trouble believing it's true. We don't know what was going on with Thomas, but we do know that once the disciples had all seen Jesus, that's all they can talk about. They've, ex they've experienced the resurrected Lord, and they've received the Holy Spirit because Jesus breathed on them and told them to receive it. So I'm sure that's all they can talk about. All they're able to share. They can't stop sharing that Jesus is risen and they've seen him. They saw the holes in his hands and the pierced side. They say, they say it says in scripture that they tell this to Thomas. But Thomas, I'm sure it probably gets so unbearable to continue to hear how they saw Jesus and how he's alive and how Thomas should have been there says, I won't believe unless I can put my finger into his hands and my hand into his side. Eight days later, scripture says, Jesus appears again and addresses Thomas directly, telling him to place his fingers in Jesus' hands and his hand in Jesus' side. Thomas responds, my Lord This is so much like us as Christians. Our faith is strengthened by the encounters that we have with the risen Lord. We don't necessarily get to put our fingers into the holes in Jesus' hands or our hand into his side. But we still experience the presence and encounter the risen, resurrected Jesus. And that solidifies and strengthens our faith. Each time that it happens. <laughs> Jesus calls Thomas to reach out and touch Jesus. To draw near to Jesus. To come and see the effects of the cross and to know that Jesus is risen. 
There are ways that this takes place in our experience. How we experience the peace of Christ. How he says, that's what the people that day and the disciples in the room, and we experience. Thomas is evidence of the journey that we all live with Christ as well. The reality is we often have doubts. It's natural. Paul Tillich once said and wrote that doubt is not the opposite of faith. It is an element of faith. An element of what we understand faith to be. A journey in a relationship with God. A journey of reaching out to God and asking for clarity about our doubts and our misunderstanding. And growing to find that clarity which strengthens our faith. Which strengthens our trust of God and in God. Sometimes our faith is mysterious because we believe before we fully understand. Because Jesus the Lord has our trust. That's why I think Thomas represents disciples and disciple making. Thomas was honest about his doubts, honest about his weakness, and honest with the people he was journeying with in faith, and honest with the Lord. What happens? The Lord meets him doubts and says reach out and touch me says come let me help you work through those doubts God says the same for us his pursuit of us is relentless scripture tells us this Psalm 23 6 says surely goodness and loving kindness will pursue us all the days of our lives and that is the character of God pursuing us. He continues to pursue us like Christ did Thomas. God pursues us and then calls us to reach out and touch. Another way it is said is to taste and see that the Lord is good. And the way that Thomas was invited to reach out and touch Christ, we are invited to take refuge the Lord and know that peace, know that peace, the peace that surpasses all understanding. The reality is, though, that isn't the end for Thomas. He hasn't reached the goal in his faith. In the same way that Mary was told to go and tell the disciples, these disciples are told to go and do the same thing. As the Father sent Jesus, Jesus says, so Jesus sends the disciples, sends us. They begin telling Thomas and he, that they received the Holy Spirit, and in, there is no way they can cease in sharing the peace they have in Christ and sharing the resurrected Christ with others. John specifically tells us he wrote the gospel that we might believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Through that, have eternal life. A compilation of stories, not all of them, John says, but ones to compel us to know that Jesus is the Son of God. One of these stories is this interaction between Jesus and Thomas. One that gives us encouragement, that Christ engages us in our humanity, desiring relationships. And it's through that relationship that we're able to reach out and touch others with the love of Christ. The love that God has given us. 1 Peter 1 verses 3 through 9 is an alternate text for our lectionary this week. But verses 8 and 9 spoke to me quite clearly and connect with this call on Thomas. It says... And though you have not seen Jesus, you love him. And though you do not see him now, but believe in him, 
you greatly rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory, obtaining as the outcome of your faith the salvation of your souls. Peter is speaking to those who've heard of Jesus, not seen him physically with their eyes, and believed even though they have doubts. They, we, are disciples of Jesus. Peter continues in calling them that, telling them that they are disciples through this faith. And we are those walking on this discipleship journey, encouraging others to walk the journey with us. We are encouraged in our discipleship and encouraged to share that with others because the outcome of our faith is salvation. Because of Jesus Christ and the love of God. Just as the Father sent Jesus, Jesus sends us. It may look different right now, but it's a time that we are able to find new ways to share Christ with each other. To share Christ with the world. A time where we're able to reach out and touch the Lord in our own faith journey. It's a time that we're able to establish new or reestablish disciplines in our lives. That cultivate our ability to know Christ better. It may be that we intentionally put aside time for prayer, scripture reading, even journaling, even a time of reflection on what God is doing. We may find that we need someone that we can talk to about our doubts. And through those conversations, our faith is deepened and our trust strengthened in the Lord. You know, we have an exceptional opportunity right now to draw near to the Lord with limited distractions. From this encounter that Thomas had with Jesus, he was invigorated as a disciple. It's believed that he would take the message of Jesus out into the world far and wide, even as far as India. It's said that many of the churches in India even bear Thomas's name as an homage to the ministry of God through Thomas. It's quite a journey Thomas took. And I can't think but all along the way of him sharing the good news of Christ inviting people to experience the peace that comes with Jesus. That's what Christ calls us to do, to share him with others. We have the Holy Spirit that invigorates us. We, like Thomas, are invited to reach out and touch Jesus, to get close, as close as we need to, that we might go out with the passion of Christ's message. Inviting people to experience Jesus' peace. We may be lifelong Christians. We may be new to the faith. We may be exploring, exploring from the edges. But Jesus invites us to this relationship. A relationship that invites us to ask questions. Share our doubts. And gain new understanding. To grow closer to Christ as we also grow closer to one another in faith. And to invite others to experience all that we are already experiencing. Let us pray. Father, we thank you that you draw near to us, that you call us, that you beckon us. want a relationship with us. That you would say to us, taste and see that the Lord is near. Know that I am alive. And alive forever. Come with me. Share your doubts with me. Strengthen your faith in me. May that be our journey drawing near to you, reaching out and touching 
experiencing your Holy Spirit's movement and excitement in our lives, giving us passion for your good news being shared with everyone. That through the love that God shares with us, we may love our best. Bless us, Lord, please. And strengthen us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us stand together and join our voices in singing hymn 101. When I survey the wondrous cross, we'll sing verses 1, 3, and 4. the Apostles Creed you can find it in your bulletin I believe in God the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ his only son our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Ghost born of the Virgin Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified dead and buried he descended into heaven third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. As we come to our time of prayer together, there are some prayer requests that I would like to share with you. I would invite you to look at your prayer list, those names that have been shared with us. Please continue to lift those who are on this list to the Lord as they continue to journey with the Lord at whatever place their journey is, in treatment, in healing. We continue to lift up the family of Clark Shannon, the family of Noah Sub, the family of James Roberts, the family of Carol Bass. We need to remember Connie Blizzard, Jimmy Smith, Joan Donalds, Phyllis Rouse, Grant Batchelor, and Phyllis Ellenberg. Let's take a moment and 
offer these requests to the Lord and those that we even recall to memory now. Let us pray. Lord, we come to you with requests on our minds. We come with praise, Lord, as well. Praise for those who are healing, for those who are being strengthened in their healing, those who are experiencing your touch, those who are being encouraged and uplifted and comforted. Lord, we thank you and praise you for those who are returning home from ICU, having recovered from the COVID-19. We praise you and thank you that there are many, even in our county, Lord, that are on the mend of the cases that we've had. We pray your continued blessing and healing upon those lives that have contracted this virus, Lord, that you would continue to protect healthcare workers, first responders, all those working in essential job professions, Lord, that you would protect them. Continue to make us wise, Lord. Continue to bless us. Continue to bless those in government positions, Lord, that are making decisions that they would make the right decisions, Lord even as protests and things occur that decisions would be made in wisdom and that they if they have a relationship with you that they would seek your counsel and if they don't want they would find you and seek your counsel guide us as we understand what all this means and how we live in the world Lord, we lift up those folks connected to our church family that have lost loved ones this week. For the family of Carol Bass, the family of Clark Shannon, for the family of James Roberts, for the family of Noah Sub. You would bless them and be with them, that you would bring encouragement to them. You would bring comfort during this time of mourning. These folks would lean on you for their strength. We pray, Lord, that you would be with and bless Connie Blizzard. Jimmy Smith, Lord. We pray for Joan Dunnels, that you would be with her. We pray for healing for Miss Phyllis Ross. Healing and strength for Grant Bachelor. For Phyllis Ellenberg, Lord, that you would bless and heal her, that you would be with her family. Lord, we thank you that you hear our prayers. That you continue to call us and tell us to draw near, to share our concerns. strength to those who need your strength and hope to those that are hopeless. Bring blessing to those who deal with depression and anxiety during this time. Lord. Bring blessing to parents who feel inadequate assisting with their child's education strength to those who are at home who have lost jobs whose financial circumstances are uncertain guide us and direct us to those who need assistance with food encourage and uplift us all as we strive to grow closer to you and to serve you better Thank you for your son and how Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the this time we will share God's tithes and our offerings with him. I encourage you to reflect on what that means in a financial and physical way with your energy and your talents as we hear this music. Generous God, you are our portion and our cup. In you our hearts are glad, our souls rejoice, and our bodies rest. Bless and multiply our offerings and pledges, that we may bring the joy of your presence more deeply into the world. A place that we serve serve you and our community, nation, and the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us stand together and sing hymn 376, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. We'll sing verses 1 and 4.
benediction. Invest in the relationship you have with the Lord. Share your questions and your doubts. And ask the Lord to aid you in growing closer. Share the peace of Christ with others and invite them to journey with the Lord. And may the peace of Christ, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah.